but I've never actually built a computer. So we're going to see how this goes. Hmm, that's pretty. Well, I guess I'll, I'll cover a couple basics first here. Let's, uh, let's, that's a fancy box, isn't it? Check that out. Look, at it hinges. Anyway, they did a nice job on the packaging. Let's hold that thought for a second. Let's get out this. Who knows what this is? This is a shirt. Not just any shirt, this is an ESD shirt, which stands for Electrostatic Discharge. This particular shirt um, came from a friend of mine, and it's from the factory that makes the electronics for the guidance systems for US military missiles. So that's what this shirt did. Uh, they have some high quality standards, of course, as you would imagine, and they have to replace these shirts every now and then. And there's uh, not really necessarily anything wrong with it. And so uh, they were allowed to take them home, you know, whatever, they, like they don't care, they gotta get rid of them somehow. And so my friend gave me this one. So, I don't really have much opportunity to uh, use something like this. I don't really mess with sensitive electronics all that much, but this seems like a good opportunity to play with this thing that I've had for years. So the, the way it works is it has this snap here on the pocket, and I'm going to hook a wire to that snap, and I'm going to ground myself, well I'm going to ground the shirt which I'll be wearing, so that I can't accidentally shock anything. So, let me, I just got this little connector here, and it's going to slide over that, kind of like that. It didn't come with a wire, so I made the wire myself. That's just an automotive spade terminal, and the other end is a, an alligator clip. So, the, um, put that on. I do have a little electronic experience, um, not, uh, not professionally or anything like that, but I have, uh, totally wired a car, like everything, built the wiring harness myself uh, for a 1970 Barracuda. Well, it's a Cuda. It's not a Barracuda. It's the performance model. So, yeah, I did a whole car. That worked. I've done a little house wiring um, in, in this house. I uh, reinstalled all of the outlets in the house to make sure that they were all grounded. The ground prong on the outlets is the, uh, not the straight one, it's the little round one at the, usually at the bottom. Sometimes people put the outlets in so it's at the top, but... Uh, yeah, so that's the ground prong, and that is a safety. It provides a place for the electricity to go if the device shorts. Uh, shorts meaning uh, if internally there's wire contacting somewhere it's not supposed to. So I am quite certain that my outlets are grounded. I've checked. There's a little device you can get, a tool you, you plug in and it tells you. Pretty easy to use. Additionally, I've, I've had them all out myself because I installed them. So I checked them all when I did it. I, let's see, somewhere here. Here we go. 
I have this test meter. This is handy. I really don't think I'm going to need this for building a computer. But uh, this is super handy. Put it way over here. That checks continuity, which means uh, are the wires connected or not. So when I touch these two together, that's going to beep at me. Well, it's supposed to. There we go. So yeah, whenever these touch, it beeps. So I used this, and I stuck one end in the ground on the, the outlet, and I stuck the other end on one of the screws on the back of my computer case. This, uh, this computer that I'm recording with right now, the old loud computer, because that computer is plugged into the, the outlet through a surge protector, of course. And so I had continuity between ground and between that screw on the computer case. So I know that that screw is grounded. Which means I can hook my alligator clip to that screw. And the other end of the wire goes here on this shirt. Let me plug that in. And this shirt has a bunch of little wires in it so that I will be grounded. And that prevents me from shocking anything accidentally. I cannot shock anything now because any electrical energy that I build up from rubbing up against things is going to go down this wire and into the wall. Pretty neat. It's probably overkill. Like most people don't do this. You can just touch something that's grounded that's metal now and then and that's fine. These modern electronics are pretty durable from what I hear. But I have this thing and I finally have a chance to use it, so I'm going to use it. All right. So, work surface does not conduct electricity. This is a laminate. Uh, it's a wooden desk that's covered in laminate, so that's a, like a plastic material. Not conductive. I think that's the end of what we need the meter for. Okay, so back to this. Oh. No, one more thing. Important safety note. Okay, so the uh, alligator clip is hooked to the screw on the computer case. It is grounded. However, this computer is turned on, and that is not something that you should do. That's, that's not a good practice. It's probably fine, but the, the potential problem is if there happens to be an internal short inside the computer, then what's supposed to happen is that that electricity will probably touch the case somewhere, and it will go through the ground wire into the wall, nice and safe. However, I am now connected to the ground. So that power will be seeking ground, and it could theoretically, potentially, come up this little wire into my shirt vest thing here that I'm wearing. It would only do that if I were a better ground than the the outlet on the wall, which is pretty unlikely, I think, because uh, electricity always takes the path of least resistance. So I feel pretty safe, but technically the advice is that when you hook your ground to something that's grounded, when, when you hook your wire from your vest or your bracelet to something that's grounded, it's supposed to be something that's turned off, because it remains grounded when it's not on. That is technically safer if the device was off. But it was handy and it was there and I think it's fairly safe. I'm comfortable with it and uh, I didn't want it off because I'm recording 
That doesn't record very well when it's off. Okay, okay, safety messages are through. Third time's the charm. Let's dig into this. So, I am new to this. How do I get that out of there? Well, it looks nice. What do we have here? A bunch of stickers? Cable labels. Fan labels. So that's kind of neat. You can rebrand your fans. bunch of triangles. Hmm. Wonder if they come with the instructions on where the stickers go like the old Transformers did. Three in. Adhesive tape. It's one of those symbols there. Looks like an eyeball. Coupon for Cable Mod Cables. That's pretty cool. Not sure if that was on the screen there or not. Was that a coaster or something? What, a giant pog? else in the box. Oh wow, there sure is. Okay. I get the feeling that I don't really need the poster or the sticker thing or the the other stickers. The manuals here might be helpful. A couple CDs. Specifications, technical updates. All right, let's definitely leave that out. Hmm. The motherboard is still in a box. Should it come out of the box somehow? There we go. put it on this surface. And then I guess I'll put all these in into this box. What is this thing anyway? Well, apparently it's magnetic. Standoff screws, I guess. No idea what that thing is. That is a cable. These look like, mostly they look like cables. Is that a cable? 
seems to be a cable plugged into itself. Like an extension, I guess. And that looks kind of like an extension too. Like it plugs into something and has the same uh, holes on both sides. Pins on one side, holes on the other. And this is... Difficult to read through the packaging. Asus ROG SLIHB Bridge. Alright. So I'm going to put these in this bin. That seems like a good place to keep stuff. I feel like I'm going to need those. I guess we'll start with these NVMe M2 drives. Let's put this aside and we'll put this on the camera. And leave me a little room at the bottom here to open these packages. All right, we've got a 500 gigabyte and a one terabyte. I think we want the operating system on the 500 gigabyte one, so we'll call that number one. And the one terabyte one is just gonna be storage. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if that gets me in here. like it comes with instructions, which are also taped closed. How odd. Just kind of generic instructions. It's, it's like pictures showing how to install every different thing they could possibly make. And a lot of uh, various languages. Okay. Let's see. I have a screwdriver set here. It's good to have a precision screwdriver set. Let's get to work. tiny little screws. It's important not to lose those. Keep your eye on them. Wow. That's metal. Heavy duty stuff. 
and it says remove all over it. Why would I do that? Is it in my way? Which part do I remove? Do I remove the whole thing? Or do I remove just the blue part? Ooh, it's sticky. I guess it sticks them down. Let's see, this says it's uh, number one socket, and that's number two socket. So I think I'll stick the 500 over here and the terabyte over there. I think this is what the screws in the box were for. So let's get them out of here. tiny little things. I do have a wrench that small. socket might be handy. There we go. Just something to hold it upright while I get it started, you know. Finger tight's probably good enough on that. things I learned from uh, I think I was repairing a laptop hard drive or an mp3 player or something was that uh, you don't want to over tighten screws on uh, sensitive electronic stuff all right so next is this thing this is the 500 I said I was putting it on this side careful where I touch the thing at. I did wash my hands before starting and, and dry them thoroughly. Just like that for a second. Well, there we go. You can see it a little bit more. Alright, let's open the other one up.
I'm sure this is terribly slow for any of you who have built a computer before. But since it's my first time, I'm going to take my time a little bit. Okay. Looks like those use the same center screw hole, right? directions and it said to use these particular holes for these screws. I think which holes to use depends on which um, drive you have. It looks like I should use one of these in the middle and not use the other one. there were many of those to do, I would definitely go get my socket. Okay, trying that again. Alright, this says 500. Seems to be all the way seated. Good. I like it. Um, needs one of these screws. and a screwdriver. Okay. That seems to be in there. And I guess this is a heat sink. That must be why it's metal. Let's try removing the blue stuff that says remove on it. the other stuff. Seems weird. Hope that's not a mistake. I just took a minute to Google that uh, foam stuff on there, and it is apparently a thermal tape and is supposed to be there. 
So yeah, just removing that blue part that says remove is the correct thing to do. That uh, stuff that looks like foam is apparently going to help transfer heat between the drive and the metal heatsink. Okay, first step done. Go ahead and put this together so they don't get lost, even though I'm not using them. next I think the get rid of these I guess I think the processor will be next straightened up. Processor. I see it there. Let's get out the big D12 here. All right, how do I get into this thing? Crazy design. Factory seal. Guess I'll cut that thing that says factory seal. something.
Let's just set that aside. Cool as it is, I need the workspace. <coughs> oh. All right. Installation instructions and a sticker. In case you like stickers. Why do they tape all the instructions closed? They don't want you to read them? Considering its size, all right, there's a triangle in one corner. Lots of little dots on the bottom. They're not really pins. Well, maybe there are some pins. No? They're more like contacts. Hmm. Okay. So, back to this. Those are pins, right? Maybe they're spring-loaded. Okay. This plastic thing comes off of here. Don't need that. It's all kinds of wobbly, huh? Triangle. go that way. Let's go for it. Just touching the sides here. Seems to be down in there. Just a tight fit here with this spring-loaded thing.
Okay. Looks like there's some protective film here that can be removed. Sure looks like protective film. There it is. Super sticky too. Okay, is there any more protective film? That is some too. That's an LED readout. Well, it's looking better. Don't think there's any on that. None on that piece. here on the IO shield. I'll leave that for a moment. I can pull that off once I get it installed in the case. 
All right. We will save that. Oh, wow, that's really reflective. You can see the camera there. Okay, next. I'll pick up this. Probably going to be this thermal pad. And the CPU fan. Or I could go ahead and install it in the case. That's an option. Where are the screws? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight. I feel like there should be another one, like here ish. Is there not? Let's look at the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. There is a spot for a ninth. It is here. Inaccessible. So I guess we're just going to use eight. All right, those eight are all around the edge. It doesn't look like the fan would be in the way too much. I think I'll see if I can go ahead and do the fan. All right, this thing is huge. Just push that aside for a minute. like a hardware kit there. paperwork or instructions, anything like that. At least not yet. A fan. Heatsink and a hardware kit. Let's let's look at the heatsink first.
text the end of that while we're messing with it. Looks like there's already a fan here, and I got another fan there. So that goes against the processor. So it looks like it comes with three sets of instructions. There's uh, AMD, LGA20XX, and LGA115X. So it's uh, different mounting instructions for whatever processor you've got. spacers. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Extra long screwdriver in case you don't have a super long one, I guess. Noxua icon is an owl. That's pretty cool. Looks like we have some thermal paste and some cables and some clips. And low noise adapters. I think they uh, limit the fan speed or something like that. stuff. It's a tight fit. All right. Well, stuff everywhere.
Okay. I don't think we need these. I think that's for someone else. We do need those. aside. There we go. Alright, now we can get back to this. This goes on the back. Those holes line up with the screw holes, or with the screws. Okay, that's a start. easily lost pieces. One side of these has edges that are a little more round versus sharp. I'm putting the rounded ones down towards the motherboard. Okay. careful not to touch the processor.
the instructions said to gently tighten those, so I think that's pretty good. Next step. All right, we're going to scoot this over. Put these back in here. Don't need those. That's for a different uh, processor, I think. still on. Now we're going to get into here. So this is a thermal pad instead of thermal paste for the processor. Top tier thermal performance, operating temperature range, specifically designed for extended service life and reusable. That is the main reason that I went with this instead of some kind of thermal paste. I tend to use computers for a very long time and paste can dry out after a while and then it doesn't work as well. So if I remember correctly the way this thing works is it, it uh, is very good at transferring heat but this particular one from this company transfers heat side to side rather than straight through. And that's so that if there are any uh, variations in the, the perfect levelness of the, the plane of either the cooler or the processor, if there's, if there's mismatched in any way, which is the reason we're putting something like this or paste in there is in case they don't match exactly then this will transfer the heat sideways to the areas where it makes better contact and will transfer better there's another company that makes um, a similar product and theirs transfers the heat straight across so you know outward through the device I didn't like that one as much
Okay, I put that into place without touching it. I don't want any oils from my skin making hot spots. So I'll use this tool they gave me. Let's turn that around so I can see it better. Okay, it started.
we're going to use uh, torque practice here, just like we were building the engine on a car or something. You tighten each bolt a little bit so that they tighten equally. Okay, we're there. Next, the fan goes on. Blows towards, blows towards the sticker, so blows that way. This wire goes to somewhere I can plug it in, so it's going to be this way. Same thing on this side. Up one, all right. Feels a bit wobbly. Now it's on there. And the other 
fan could go here if it clears. But I might just use it in the case. We'll see. These are 3200 megahertz. Tip that up so you can see it. Plenty of clearance here. If you were installing four of these, you'd have to pay more attention to which slot you're putting them in.
right, memory's installed. Guess I won't really be able to see the digital readout there. Bummer. And the fan won't go right there. So that'll be a case fan. Looks pretty good though. Have to decide which slot to put the graphics card in. Slide this over here, and I think we are ready for the case. All right, the case box is too big to open up on the desk, so I'm going to open it over here and then just put the case on the desk. Okay. All right, this opens somehow. All right, case open, it is big. This is the front side, which is just really flat. Some ports on the top. Okay. Let's remove the thumb screws for the glass panel. carefully set that aside. So it looks like we have three cooling fans in the front. One, two, three. And we have one in the back. There's some LED strips across the top. There we go. These. And this piece comes out The front panel is just flat, and the intake for these fans is all these holes.
This looks like a hard drive case or something. Just removing that for kind of a cleaner look. Since I have the solid state drives, I don't think I need this. All right, now I'm gonna undo this screw. I should probably take the back panel off. Maybe that would be a good thing to do. I wonder how that comes off. It's got to come off somehow. Maybe there's something on the back. Looks like there's a release button. There's the button. All right. Now I can see the inside of this thing. haven't seen any uh, paperwork or instructions yet or anything. Maybe it's in that box. That's a lot of cables. There is a lot of cables already in here. I, I guess that's for the fans and the lights. See what's in this box. Looks like more LED strips and some cables and some cable ties and some screws. Maybe a standoff? Paperwork, there we go. Hmm. All right, here's another screw to take out. These are in pretty tight. Trying to remove the cable bar. Guess I'll set that stuff aside. There's my front power switch, USB ports, and I think it's a microphone and headphones. Yeah. It's got little icons there.
trying to remove that front panel. Front panel is now removed. trying to see this thing a little better. Just holding it in the light a little different. Okay, so I lift up on the front here. And that's supposed to be how I remove the top panel. switch is in the top panel or is it I guess just the button is and the switch is in the case so that's interesting good design I guess I don't have to worry about a wire being attached to that panel that you pull off okay got a screw right here. bar is now loose. Alright, that's this piece. That is the cable bar. I am considering painting that a, a different color, just because everything is so black. It's done up in white on the box. thinking I might do chrome. is a tray for more fans. I have a dust screen on the front. I would like to make sure that the fans are installed in the correct direction. don't seem to be labeled. They're all installed the same direction, so that's something.
I guess I will compare them to this Noxua fan. Because it is labeled. All right, what, what does it say? Blows towards this side, which is the side with all the bracing. And the fan blade spins this way. Tuck that wiring in there. shape of the blades tell me something here. Alright, it's scooping the air, the curved shape of the blade. Yes. I see how those are set up, and those three are facing the correct direction. This one is two. Good news. I'd hate to put it all together and then have one of the fans be pushing air the wrong direction because the factory worker wasn't paying attention or something. So let's talk about airflow here. Okay. So here we go. Airflow. Motherboard's gonna sit over here. Processor's here-ish with the big um, heat riser radiator things here. There's a fan in them that pushes the air that way. Down is that way. Up is that way. So heat naturally rises. It's going to want to come from the bottom up. So I would like to bring the air in at the front at the bottom and put it out at the back at the top. So I want the, the air to generally flow that direction. Now I have uh, three fans on the front and one on the rear. I like positive pressure inside the case, which means you have more air coming in or being forced in than is going out through the fans. So you'll have additional air coming out through all these extra holes and uh, not dirt coming in. So I wonder if this fan is the same size as that. Feels pretty close to the same size. that would be able to go on the top up here. Sure. 
then I could be pushing air upward. That's the direction it wants to go anyway. Boy, I don't even know if that fan is designed to do this. It's not square like all the other ones. It's weird shaped. should have put something down on the desk to protect it a little bit. Alright, these things right here. I don't need those. So that's what's next. Whatever holds those in place. I see now. All right.
I suppose those are spring-loaded for a reason, and I wouldn't need to take the screws all the way out. All right, got that cleaned up. Just kind of getting rid of anything I don't need. Want it to look kind of clean, you know? Looks like that middle post for the motherboard, the one where I can't get to the, the screw, is just an alignment pin. It's not threaded. So that should be fine. Okay, it looks like this top fan section here holds fans that are five inch um, spacing for the for the mounting or four and a quarter inch spacing for the mounting and that is not this uh, extra Noctua fan that I have so that apparently won't be being used here I suppose I'll run these uh, NZXT fans and see if I like them or not make sure they're not too loud and uh, I can replace them with something else later if I need to. Alright. This is a smart case. That's what the eye designates. Has some kind of a little brain box here. I think it's for controlling the lights or something. I'm just making sure the plugs on it are plugged in that nothing came loose during shipping. Fans are securely attached. They spin without hitting any wiring. There's Velcro straps back here to hold wires. That's kind of neat. Okay, yeah, it's, it's uh, fans and lights and switches and things like that. I wonder if this hard drive cage is going to be in my way. I guess I'll get out the power supply and look. Let's set that aside. Okay, the power supply. So I got a really big power supply that puts out has the potential to put out more power than I really need. And that's because it can make the amount of power that I need without having to work very hard. Which means it's not going to make much heat when I use it. Which means the fan isn't going to be needed much. And it should be a very quiet machine. 80 plus platinum. Very efficient. 80 plus platinum certified efficiency and zero RPM fan mode ensure silent operation at low and medium loads. So I just had to make sure that uh, the amount of load that I was expecting to use was below what was considered to be medium for this device. Ah, here we go. Here we go, fan noise level comes on at 40% of system load. So I just had to do the math for the power of all of these components, um, what they require, and figure out what 40% of the 1200 is, it's for watts, and make sure that uh, what I was expecting to use for power was underneath 40% of 1200. And even if the fan does come on some, you know, during heavy use, it's not going to be constant um, maximum fan. You know, it's going to be a little bit of fan. So ultra low noise. Let's see if that fixes my my main problem here. Let's hope so.
which way's up on this thing? Alright, name brand out. box for that thing. Okay. So that's the outside. Hmm. I have to figure out which way I want it to blow. Looks like it fits though. Hard drive cages aren't in the way. Shouldn't be any problem. Let's see. I can blow the air. I believe it comes in here and comes out where the fan is at. Is that right? Or is it the other way around? Yeah, pretty sure it comes in here and comes out where the fan is at because there's a dust filter on the bottom of the case. So I could install it like this. No, that's that's the other way around. So yeah, if I installed it like this, it would suck air in through the dust filter, through this fan, and it would come out here. And I have warm air coming out of here on the back of my current computer, so that seems to be the way it works. So the question is, do I want it uh, pulling air from inside the machine, or do I want it pulling air from outside the machine? Probably from outside the machine, because that will be cooler air than from inside the machine. As long as I have sufficient airflow on the bottom here. Never set your computer on carpet. Bad idea. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. So I should have sufficient airflow. The legs keep keep it up off of the the surface. I will probably install it like this. All right. I've spent some time looking at the case. Those should be fine. I'm sort of familiar with it now. We'll 
let's see about putting this thing together. Looks pretty good. I can see threads down the holes there. Ohio shields lined up. Okay, I found some screws in the bag of stuff that came with the case, and they seem to be the ones to use for the standoff. I know from working on cars that you don't want to just tighten the first one all the way, you just you got to get them all started, and then you tighten them all uh, evenly if possible. bag says these are 632 screws so if you ever need to know that you know, maybe that I don't know if that's universal for different uh, standoffs or not but it might be the size you need if you lose one six should have to do with the diameter of the rod and the 32 should be the threads per inch. Maybe it's not per inch, maybe it's per something else if they're metric screws.
All right, that's five. This one's a little tricky. It's down in the hole.
it so I can see at least. started I should be able to tighten them up now keeping in mind that it's electronics and it shouldn't need to be crazy tight we don't want to crack the board or anything Okay, it's in there. Alright, I think the next step is going to be installing the power supply. So, set this back up. or some kind of a power supply mounting bracket. Okay, so I've decided to mount this this direction, not that direction. Either way is fine, works fine, but uh, just a matter of where you want to draw your air from for the power supply and what direction you want your airflow going inside the tower. So, I don't know if this fits through this hole, does it? It does. Warning, silent operation. Don't expect this to make noise. All right. So. I 
I see. That's what holds this thing in. Huh. And that's it, I guess, huh? sure they're tight. Make sure the switch is off. The O is open circuit, which is off. The straight line is on. Okay, now I need uh, the screws that hold the power supply onto that bracket. I guess they're in the power supply box. Didn't see anything in the power supply box. These are from the computer case box. Let's see if that goes in easily. Yes, it does. So that seems to be the right thread. We'll use those. started here. I suppose I could attach that plate to the power supply before putting it in the computer. Not sure what I think of that.
think I'm going to try it. See what I'm doing a little better. At least got them all started now. Okay, power supply is in. I think the next thing is going to be cabling, followed by the graphics card. Before I go any further, I'm going to work on this piece. So this goes, let's see, this way? Nah, this way. This goes this way in the tower. And uh, it kind of hides your cables 
and it can also be used to support uh, water cooling which uh, looks really cool but I'm not a huge fan of mixing water with electronics so I prefer to avoid the water cooling as cool as it looks um, and go for air cooling which is why I have this huge air cooler um, so the advertising for this case showed this piece in white and I really liked the look of it but then I realized that in order to get this piece in white the outside of the case also has to be white and then the, the inside of the case is black and they come in other colors besides white there's a blue one and a red one and I was pretty tempted by the blue one I like blue um, but I decided that with the LED lights that are in here, and that there's not many, but with the few that are in here, I would be better to go with the white than the blue, and then I can just make the lights be blue, and it will make the, the white piece appear sort of bluish. So after thinking about that some more, I've decided that uh, the motherboard here has a lot of reflective and silvery chrome kind of elements and the the RAM has a DDR sorry old school terminology the DDR has a kind of a silver top edge here that's visible so I'm gonna go with silver for this piece now I'm gonna try to go more towards a reflective silver like a chrome or something but I'm not gonna actually chrome plate this I'm just gonna paint it um, now I, I picked up uh, some of this at at the hardware store. Boy, the lighting's rough there, huh? There we go, Krylon Metallic Silver. And so that's what I was thinking about using. Um, but then I found this in my garage when I was cleaning out the garage. Um, it's a dupli color and it is chrome. Instead of metallic silver it's actually chrome color. Um, it's basically the same thing. It's it's just a reflective silver finish. There might be some, some minor variation there but should be the same thing. This is just an older can. I used this on some front marker lights slash turn signals for a 1970 Plymouth CUDA and I've got most of the can left it's it's old but the ball still rattles around I think it's good stuff um, so I'll probably end up using that and might take this one back to the store because I don't need two cans of the stuff in the garage um, but you never know if it if it doesn't work out for some reason I've got that other can for a backup um, now, in order to get this to work, to, to look good, be nice and shiny, um, what that requires is for this piece to have the smoothest finish possible. Right now, it has a slight texture. Um, so what I need to do is prime this and then sand it down smooth. Um, I could just try to sand it as is, but I don't want to take the finish down to bare metal. I'd like to keep the part protected even though it's an inside part and it's not really going to be exposed to the elements. Um, I'll, I'll keep it protected in this finish, which is probably a powder coat, pretty durable stuff. And I'm going to coat it in some primer and sand that down super smooth with a very fine grit paper. And then I will coat it with the shiny stuff once that's done. So for primer, let's see here. I have a couple cans I found in the garage. Um, Krylon 2-in-1 Primer, Filler and Sandable. Ideal for metal, fiberglass, wood, interior and exterior. That's the same brand as this one. So if I were going to use that can, I'd probably use those together. You know, that's okay. And then there's this one, which is a little harder for you to see, I guess. It is a PPG brand, which is a Pittsburgh Paint and Glass. That's a professional company. Um, these two over here, they came from a hardware store. Uh, this is from an 
auto parts store like AutoZone or Discount Auto Parts. I think this one came from AutoZone. Um, this is from actually a body shop supply company. This is a professional paint. So this is the, the best quality uh, thing that's here. Um, one choice, see, it's, there's not a lot of bright shiny colors for marketing because this isn't for sale to the general public. This is for sale to professional who knows what they're looking for. But uh, yeah, it's got the, the part number here, etch prime gray, uh, cap indicates color. So this is a self-etching primer. It will actually eat into the surface a little bit to attach very firmly to the item. Uh, I guess it's kind of acidic when it goes on. And yeah, now you can use anything for primer. I mean, paint could be used as a primer. It's just, you know, your first coat and you sand it down. So the, the difference here, the reason why you would use primer instead of paint is that primer is, it's easier to sand and it dries faster. So if you put paint on this part and you try to sand the paint smooth, it's going to be more difficult to sand because the paint is meant to be an exterior coating. It's durable. So you're going to put more work into sanding that smooth. And also it's going to dry a little slower. So you have to wait longer before you can work with it. But the primer, that dries faster and sands easier. So you get more work done in the time spent great for production. So um, that's that's about it for this and I'm gonna take a little break here and go paint this with primer and once that primer's dry then I'm going to spray some guide coat on it. Now this is a, an old can it specifically says black guide coat. Yeah black guide coat and this is another can that's from an auto body supply store. It's an old can, as you can see. It's been in the garage a while. Um, so as long as this can still works, and it should, then I'll, I'll spray it. Yep, the ball still rattles. So uh, I'll spray it, uh, sort of mist it on. It's not really a thorough coating. You don't want to coat the item. You just sort of mist it on a little bit, sort of give it flecks of color. And the guide coat is a, a different color than the primer, and its purpose is to help show you where you've sanded and where you haven't sanded. So basically you sand the guide coat off with your sanding block. So I'm going to use a super fine grit piece of paper, sandpaper, and a sanding block that is perfectly flat. And I'm going to sand this whole surface until I don't see the guide coat color anymore. Now you could have some minute high spots and low spots in your application of the paint and those will show up. What will happen is you'll sand off the high spots with the paper and the low spots will still be the color of the guide coat. So you sand it down until you can't see the guide coat anymore. You just have the color of the primer and when you've hit that point, then you're perfectly flat. And ideally, you want to hit that point before you sand through the high spots to the bare metal. I don't think I'm gonna have that problem on this, but it happens with cars. So your, your coating has to be thick enough that it fills the low spots and still has enough thickness that the high spots are covered. That's probably an overly technical explanation, but uh, that's, that's what I'm up to. So taking a break, I'm going to go prime and guide coat this, and then I'll, I'll show it to you again with the sandpaper and the sanding block, and then I'll sand it, and we'll proceed from there. Let me take these off the camera here. All right, here we go. Okay, here we are. Put a few coats of primer on this. Just wanted to show it real quick.
Now I didn't paint the back side. It's still black with a little overspray. So not too worried about that. Just worried about the side you're gonna see here. And I did try to paint the edges a little bit. So there we go, that's primer. Next I'm gonna put the guide coat on and uh, then I'll start sanding. And we're back. Here we go. All right, so this is what it looks like with the guide coat. As you can see, it's just sort of misted or splattered on there. The, uh, the guide coat can has a special spray nozzle tip on it that produces this spray pattern. You could just use a regular you know, can of whatever paint you got laying around. Here's my sandpaper. I have uh, a lot of different grits of sandpaper laying around, working on cars and stuff. So this is a 1500 grit, wet or dry. Um, so yeah, wet or dry paper, uh, it's, it's uh, safe to use in water so that the paper part doesn't dissolve when it gets wet. So it's, it's durable. Um, I'm just going to use a dry, I think. Uh, I don't know, maybe I might get a little wet later on when I'm, when I'm about done, but we'll see. Uh, so 1500 grit, that has to do with how coarse the texture is. Uh, higher numbers are less coarse. So 1500 is super fine. Um, that's the finest one that I had in the garage. So uh, I'm going to sand the part with the paper. Now to do that, I have a sanding block. So uh, they make these in all different shapes and sizes. This is intended for sanding. If you want to have a flat surface when you're done, it's important that you start with a flat sanding block. Now, your hand is very much not flat. You can kind of see the difference here. So yeah, hand not flat. So what you want is a sanding block that reaches all the way across the panel. And I'm probably going to be sanding in this direction, like the length of the panel, especially in these corners. And that's about all there is to it. So let me see if I can do this a little bit. You make sure you hold the block by the sides you don't want your fingers to overhang the edge and touch the surface because you'll make a, a wear spot. You won't be flat anymore. So sides only. Uh, and you can cut the paper to fit with scissors. I think I will cut that to fit. Half should work, right? Yeah, half will work pretty good. I'm gonna fold it, then I cut it. All right, one piece for later. One piece for now. That's more like it. Here's the progress. So uh, you can see I've got some some sanding dust here on the table. The 1500 grit sandpaper ended up being too fine. Uh, of a place to start for this job. So that's too much work to use the 1500 grit to start with. Um, so I switched to a thousand grit, which is something else I had laying in the garage. So you see it says a thousand on it. Um, I would still, you know, finish it with the 1500 grit after getting the worst of it with the thousand, but this saves me a lot of effort. Um, but I'm still having some problems with the sandpaper just gets so full of the, the dust and the paint that then it stops sanding. So basically you fill the low spots of the sandpaper with your, your paint dust and then the sandpaper is just smooth and flat and you're not really sanding anymore. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to wet sand because the water washes away the debris out of the grit so your, your sandpaper lasts longer. 
So I might uh, switch to wet sanding. Uh, but at the moment, I just wanted to show you my progress here. So I've, I've kind of went over the whole thing um, with a thousand grit, and it feels pretty good to the touch. But um, I wanted to show you um, what this looks like here. So uh, this, let me get a little closer to the camera there. Okay, so we have, let me get something better to point with. All right. So we have the, the gray area that's with kind of the black speckles. That's the guide coat. So that area hasn't really been touched much yet, at least not enough to remove the guide coat. Then we have the, the light gray area. That's the primer color. So that's a, you could say that's a high spot because it was sanded down by the sanding block and sandpaper. The, the paper was touching this and sanded off the guide coat. But this area in the middle here, that's a low spot because the guide coat was not yet sanded off. And then you've got this black area. That's actually the finish that's underneath the primer, the original black color of the part. So that's a really high spot. So you can kind of see the, uh, the different height of the part. And so same thing with, with this rectangle shaped panel. You have highs around the edges and low in the middle. And it's kind of the way it looks all over the whole thing. And that's just from the way that they bent the metal when they made the part. It's not perfect, but we're gonna make it better by body working it. So basically what this tells me is that I need uh, more primer. If I keep sanding, I'm going to sand through the black metal finish, or through the black finish to the metal. And I don't really want to do that. What I need to do is raise the low spots so that they're even with the high spots. So what I need to do is take this back out and, and spray a couple more coats of primer on it and let those dry and then start again. And that's, uh, that's where I'm at. So, that's uh, what I'm going to go do. I might even switch to um, a 600 grit. I know I've got some out there. We'll see. 600 would save me a bit of time. And then I would get, then go over that with the, with the other grits. So, but I got to get the worst of it off first. All right. Here we go. All right. So I've uh, applied some more primer and then I wet sanded it with 600 grit. Uh, that worked way better. 600 is the way to go, at least for getting started. So this is uh, what it looks like at the moment. I didn't put guide coat on it this time, so it's a little harder for you to see the, the spots. But uh, See how there's a dark line on the edge and then one on the inside with a, a low in between it? That's a, a side effect of folding this lip over from when they made the part. And I had that issue um, down both sides. Um, another thing that you can see is there's a line right here. And there's another one here. Similarly, there's, there's matching lines over here. And the one here. So what, what that is, that's where the machine contacted the back of the panel, pushed this in to bend the part. So that's a, that's a high spot, is what that is from pressure on the back side. So we're getting all that out with the primer. So we're going to make it flat. Now visually you can see it, but I can't feel it. 
which means we won't see it when we cover over it with the other paint. But I'm going to go ahead and do one more coat of primer because I have a few spots. I've got a, a nick right here and a line right there from bending that lip. There's still a couple lows. So I'm going to put another coat of primer on it. And it's mostly flat. I'll go over it probably with a thousand uh, with wet with the wet sanding because wet sanding is makes it way easier so definitely the way to go there all right I'll be back okay I've done most of the work here in 600 grit wet sanding got it all flat and everything um, that took the coat of primer that I talked about and it also took one more coat of primer just to, to hit a few light spots so yeah, most of the work's done in 600. I got it pretty flat. And then I have applied this new guide coat to go over it one more time with the finer grit paper. So it's pretty good. I just need to finish it up. I got a new piece of 1500 grit here. I'm gonna sand it down with that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the water wet sanding because it just makes the sanding go so much easier when the paper doesn't get clogged with dust. All right, so I'll be back to show you the, the finished product. Progress update. So I've been sanded on this with the 1500 grit paper wet sanding, and it's going all right. The inside corners here are the hardest parts. They have been the whole way along. Um, burned through right here a little bit. I got some bare metal showing, so I'll after I'm done, I'll probably hit that spot with a little primer and, and go over it again, but just that spot. So, yeah, I got, got a little ways to go still. As you can see, there's still some black guide coat left. But once I get that all scrubbed off with 1500 and everything's flat and smooth, then uh, I'll be good to go. And you might be able to see in the light here that it's actually... It, uh, it reflects the light pretty well. It's... Uh, kind of polished. That's basically what I'm doing. So, uh, back at it. And we're back. Alright, this is the, uh, the final result here. I've went over the whole thing in 1500. And uh, I wanted to point out that, if I didn't say it earlier, the reason I'm going to such uh, so much work to make this perfectly smooth is because I'm using chrome paint. And it, it needs to be sort of glossy and reflective. So to get the best result, you need to have a super smooth finish. If I were painting this any other color, um, then it could be a textured color. That really wouldn't matter. It would, it would look great. But I'm going into the extra work because I know how and I have the stuff in the garage and I want to use chrome paint. So that's the why. All right, so, so here's how it looks. Um, you can kind of see the light reflect off of it there. Pretty shiny. Um, it's like that everywhere. So, touched up my bare metal spot and went over that again with uh, 1500. And now it's time for paint. So, moment of truth, I'm gonna go shoot some paint on it and we'll see how it comes out. Now, if the paint doesn't have a lot of uh, solids in it, color, if it's not uh, opaque, I could potentially have issues with this dark color um, showing through. And in that case, um, I would probably have to put on a second coat. Not too bad. Uh, my other option to prevent that from happening would be to prime the whole thing again and sand it again, but that's a lot of work. So I'm just gonna go see what happens. And uh, with any luck, the paint is fairly opaque and will cover just fine. I did uh, sand the, the rounded edges a bit where the metals rolled over. Um, so the edges won't be all you know rough and jaggedy. Um, that's about it. Time to go see what happens. So here's where we're at after color. As you can see, it's pretty shiny, reflective. You can see that uh, 
center hole here reflected on both sides. You see the computer case over here, my fingers. So yeah, it's not quite like a mirror. It's, it's a little cloudy. I might polish it up some and, and get it a little smoother still, but uh, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. So this will complement the other mirror finishes in here and the silver colors that are on the DDR. And it will also help uh, reflect the LED lights for whatever color I choose to put them on. So that's kind of what I wanted. And uh, it'll look kind of like the one on the advertisement that had the white bar, but this one will be silver reflective. All right. All right, so I finished painting the, the trim piece, the chrome color that I want, and now it's time for some cable routing. Got to plug some things in. And so if you've never built a computer uh, like me, then this comes with an instruction manual. This is the motherboard instruction manual, and it has a diagram for where everything gets plugged in. So here's a quick shot of this diagram and everything's numbered and there's a list of where it's at and a few more descriptions of what things do. So if you don't know what you're doing, read the instructions. It's working for me so far. So uh, I've kind of glanced over the instructions there and I've looked at um, the computer here and the first thing I want to plug in is the CPU fan. Now, I, I already put that on the heat riser and everything, and I think I'm going to rotate it a different direction, like a clock it to a different position, so that the cable reaches to where I want to go better. Because uh, the position it's in right now leaves a ton of slack in the cable, and I think it will look better if I spin the fan um, so that there's less slack in the cable. So, um, how do I want to show this to all of you? Let's see. I can scoot this closer. I could uh, lay the computer down again. Or I could try to tilt the camera. Let's uh, try laying down the computer to start with. Try to get the part I'm working with on camera here. So the fan is held on with these clips. didn't have them super, super tight there. All right. And I want to rotate this. Now the the airflow goes this direction. So I can't I can't flip the fan this way. It'll blow the wrong direction. But I can turn it. And so I'm going to turn it so that these part numbers aren't facing outward to look nicer and I won't have as near as much slack in the cable. Okay. So, I'm just going to spin it like that. So the part number will be up. There we go. Now I put this clip back in. And the holes, all four holes in the fan are equally spaced. So you can mount it any direction. All right, just a second here. All right, we're back. So I'm going to put this in this way, and the cable will just go over a little bit to where I need to plug it in at. It's a little bit of a handful. 
trying to hold the clips in position. plugs in down there pretty hard to, to see this is the most difficult one to plug in it looks like let's undo this give myself a little more slack to work with I want to try to plug it in nice and straight, you know. There we go. All right. And that is the CPU fan, and it is plugged into the port for the CPU fan. It's not really critical if the if the fan is perfectly centered over the air riser. It just needs to blow the air through it. The fan's actually bigger than the air riser, so if it were off-center, it probably wouldn't matter that much. But I like things to be symmetrical, so I'm going to go ahead and check it out since I can. It looks like I'm off by one fin on the air riser, so let me move this up one space. There we go. Now that's supposed to be even. Doesn't quite look even. Let me count that again. Okay, that looks a little better. Make sure it's tight. Use a straight edge and make sure it doesn't stick out past where the glass is going to be. Plenty of room there. Looks like we're there. I'm going to double check the cable, make sure it's tight. All right, looks pretty good. So the first cable's done. All right, that's supposed to be the hard one. The rest of them should be pretty easy. They just kind of plug in around the edges. This case is an H700i, and the I means that it's a smart case. And what that means is that it comes with this little box here which is a controller for fans and lights. I wasn't particularly looking for that feature in a case, but they were out of stock of the ones that didn't have the eye on the end. So I went ahead and got this one because I could get it. But I don't really need that feature and I'm not gonna use it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is unplug that. This motherboard is capable of running the fans and the lights on its own and the ROG Light Software Aura has better product reviews than this, which uses software that I think is called CAM. So I'm just going to use the, the built-in one in the motherboard. So I'll be unplugging these because I don't need them plugged into that box. So this one is lights. I will use that, but it's going to plug in over here in the motherboard. And these are fans. And I think these aren't actually the fan cables, these are fan extensions. Each one, each one of those wires has multiple fan connections on the back side. Um, I'm probably just going to leave the box there because it's not in my way and it's mostly hidden by the painted piece that I have. But uh, I want to plug the fans into the motherboard instead of into that. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is lights because, well, they're, they're here. Okay, so the lights are this cable. 
I guess you guys can't quite see what I'm doing there. Unbent this little tab right here just a little bit. Its purpose is to hold these wires in place. There we go. Okay, so this is power for more wires. Let me hang that back there for a minute. This is power for this uh, set of lights. So this is the one that plugs into the motherboard. And this one says RGB header, the white one there. So how do I want this cable to run? Let's see. There we go. Boy, that first try I had it on three of the pins and one was sticking out the side. Guess you gotta watch out for that. Actually, I think I, I might want to run that a different direction. There's a, a, a window right here for cables to pass through, and I think that would be a better place for the cable to go. I just have to figure out how to get it over there. Let's stand this back up. I could always cut holes in the case and enlarge holes, but that's more work than I want to do right now. All right, that's on. And double checking my fan connection there. The fan connection's here, and the light connection's right there. All right, let's go back around to the other side for a minute. Try to get this where everyone can see it here. So these are the three fan things that I just disconnected from that box. This wire is the rear fan. All right, that one has, looks like the front fan's plugged into it. This one is not connected to anything at all. And this one is connected to the rear fan. Okay, so the rear fan doesn't really need to be connected to this big extension. So we're gonna unplug that. All right, so now we have two extensions or splitters out of the way get rid of the stuff we don't need. All right, now this fan cable, it's gonna plug into a port down here on the other side on the motherboard. So I need to get the cable to be down there from up here. It looks like straight down this side over here is gonna be the way to do that. Well, I will, I will tidy that up later. In the moment, I'm just gonna stick this cable through the hole so that I can get to it on the other side. Let's uh, put it through this Velcro. Keep it from wandering off. Okay, so that's a start. Now the front fans, they plug in on the side of the motherboard um, somewhere over here, I think towards the bottom. So that's going to be all of these. And uh, they're all plugged into this extension, and I do actually want that because there's three front fans, and I'm going to plug them into one plug on the motherboard. Now I checked, I can do that because each fan takes 0.16 amps, and the motherboard connection can power up to one full amp and 0.16 times 3 is considerably less than 1. So that port on the motherboard will safely power everything, no problem. I just have to plug this into it. And I think that's here-ish. Let's uh, set that through there and we'll get to it on the other side. And then we have this and that. All right, so this is a whole bunch of cables. What do these do? Okay, so more cables. These are the cables for all the buttons on the front of the case. Well, they're on the top of the case on this model. Okay, I also have this um, hard drive tray. 
It's probably not in my way ultimately, but it would be way easier to plug stuff in to the power supply if it wasn't here. So I'm going to take that off next. All right, one's out. Hard drives are becoming a thing of the past. Looks like there's another bracket there still. That's even less in my way. There's screws on the bottom that remove it. I don't think I need to though. I think I'll leave that one there. All right, thumb screws back in so they don't get lost. Okay, what's next here? I guess figuring out what all this stuff is and, and uh, where to poke it through at. That says USB 2.0 must connect to motherboard. This says USB 2.0. This says HD audio. Front panel, that's going to be your on off button, things like that. And this is high speed USB 3.0. Okay, where do these things go? Let me back up here one at a time. All right, the fan. Fan is here. The USBs, I don't remember what the book said, but I can pull out the book and look. All right, this, this connection here, that I think is power for the smart box, so I don't need that one. Um, for that matter, one of these USBs is the same thing. I need to figure out which one that is and not plug it in. It's probably the one with the single connector. Don't need to plug in something that's not connected to anything. So we're going to look right here. Here it is. So the smart box is right here. There's two wires coming out of it. some room to work with here. Yes, this uh, cable that I pointed at is power for the brain box. And the other cable, try to get it over next to it. It's a round cable. It is this one. So yeah, the USB with the single cable instead of the one with the tool, dual cable, this one is for that uh, little brain box thing, so I don't need that plugged in at all. All right, zip these back down. Maybe I'll be back in them later. Tell you what, let me just put these through at the side here, and I will work with them from the other side. A little difficult to work on both sides of the machine at the same time. Especially if you want both sides on camera. So this one is the fans. And the fan header is this one right here. All right, so that's fans. And actually, I think I probably want that to go down. I want it to look like this instead of going sideways. I think that'll look nicer, but uh, I'm gonna leave it there for a minute until I get these other things that go underneath of it plugged in. HD audio. I believe that's over here. Okay, all the cables. And I need to sort through them one at a time. 
that's USB. There's the audio cable. That's front panel. That's USB 3. That's not, not too much to it, I guess. Looks like a lot of cables, but it's not bad. So HD audio needs to go this way. Got it. So this cable goes all the way over here. And this is the fan for the rear. It plugs into right there, so it's in the correct opening in the case. Front panel plugs in here. So I want it to go through this hole. What does that leave me with? USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. Now the 3.0 is here. So I definitely want it to go through this big hole here. USB 2.0's down at the bottom. These two right here. So either one of those. I'm going to use the one on the right. So the 2.0 cable, wherever it went, it's in here somewhere. also goes through this hole. All right. Now that I kind of know which holes the wires are supposed to go through, I can flip it back over and make, make the cables prettier. But this one, this fan, I don't want through this hole. It's going to go through the bottom like the other stuff there. All right, that's what's next. Stand this back up, back around the other side. Now I can work on making this a little prettier. USB 3.0, that's you. And you go this way. You have to have a nice way to bend the cable here. Yeah, that's kind of awkward having one cable longer than the other. But it is what it is. That's what I got to work with. Let's try one of these other cables. So that's the fan. That's the front panel. Make the cable straight and pretty here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to work with this standing up. I know that makes it a little difficult for all of you to see what's going on. But uh, I just need to be able to access both sides of the machine at the same time. And I can't do that with one side down on the table. The front of the computer is near me. I have the, the side with the motherboard and all the connections on my left, and the hidden side with all the cables on the right. Front panel. Turn that again. Let's see if I can get it where I can see better. It was a snug fit, but it totally went on. Next, I want the fan because it goes above that. Plugged in. Make 
straighten out its cable, make it look decent. Next is the USB 2.0. I think I want to flip it over and look at the back again. Alright, get an idea. Make sure the cables aren't tangled. So that one goes through this hole. Three more cables here. We have, oh, well, two of them go to the USB 2, and the other one is the audio. So, USB next. Let's move it on this side of that cable. Yeah. Now the fans and the front panel cables are together all the way here. USB 2 goes there. HD audio goes down here somewhere. All right, back to the front. So USB 2.0 goes like this. Nice even pressure from both sides. Make sure it's seated all the way. Next is the fan over here. Straighten out its cable a little bit again. Alright. Now, I've got an um, audio plug over here somewhere. Now for the USB 3. Now, I always hear that you have to be super careful with these. Uh, maybe the pins are smaller or something, but for some reason, these are more likely to cause problems than the others. So I'm going to try to be extra careful with the USB 3. But it doesn't look difficult or anything. Yeah, plug straight in. Didn't seem to be a problem at all. So that part's done. Time to tidy up the back a little bit. Looks pretty good on the front so far. But this is kind of a mess here. So I want to do what I can to tidy this up. Let's start over here. Hmm. Where do I want to run that cable? I think we'll try that. All right, so I just uh, kind of looped it into a cable routing thing at the top and tried to keep it tighter down here. Uh, this one comes up and down through here. I think I'm gonna unplug the 2.0 USB. so that I can move it around this other cable to get it where I want it at. So I want it to go through here, through here and through here, then down through here, 
back up again. I like that. Now I need to plug it in. Looking good so far. I have this uh, unused USB. Probably put it up through here. And then I have all of this. Oh, and, and that one. Hmm. Well, this stuff first. Hmm. USB 3.0 is such a flat, stiff cable. It's more difficult to route. All right, that might work. And then for this, hmm, I think I can figure that one out. But uh, all these bulky fan extension plug-ins are a little awkward. They probably just need to go in kind of like that. Alright, so I'm going to work on that. See if I can get those fastened down. Okay, that's the unused cable. Not really a tie down to hold it up, but the case will hold it in place. Missed one. Alright. There, now all the cables are in the loop. Loop is threaded through the hole. Plugs are all tucked down under there. Do this one one more time. should do. I still have the, the LED light cable that's loose. I gotta deal with that. And it looks like this fan cable needs to be in that little metal tab. Oops, that's not the right screwdriver. I'll give you a peek at what it looks like here. Okay. I still need to do something with that LED RGB cable. I'd like it to come straight down right here. I might go with that. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. I think I can live with that. Yep, looking good. Got to do something with it up top here. Might have to undo the back to fix that. Okay, undo what I just did. And give me a little slack up here. Hmm, what can I fasten that to? Uh, I'd like it to be held down, not pulled over here. I mean, it works fine either way, but it looks prettier if it's held down. Maybe I can zip tie around it. That would hold it in that position. Does that do the job? It helps. Doesn't exactly do the job. Okay, I can zip tie it there. I think that's probably the way to go. Okay, so I didn't need that, that zip tie that I just put in really. 
basically putting this back to the way I had it. And I found a place to zip tie it in the front so that this cable doesn't hang down. I'm gonna, gonna put it right here and that'll keep it up. out of the window. It's important to not to pinch your wires when you're putting zip ties. So you see how that's loose enough it can still move around. There we go. I might cut that other zip tie off entirely. Because it's not doing anything for me. Okay, moving on with the wiring. It's going good so far. Uh, next is this dangly one here. So that's for the other LED strip. Right here. Okay. Take the plug off the end. Those are male pins. So one end of this will be female. That one. All right, don't need those caps. Put them back in the bag here. Looks like there's also an LED extension cable in here. In case you want to put this somewhere else. In the case. You might want a little more cable. All right. So I'll plug this in. And it is actually magnetic. Now, I think this red stuff would come off and it's sticky. So you could, you could stick it down. But the magnet's good enough for me. It's a metal case. So I want it along this side here. Yeah. And the extra wire has to poke through this hole. I guess I need to watch those holes there for that front panel. Make sure I'm not uh, interfering with anything I need. All right, front panel is this one. And I believe it goes like this. I do see now which holes are used. Maybe I want to move this inward just a little. There we go. All right, that won't interfere with the front cover going on at all. I could zip tie that up a little bit. I think I'll do that. So this cable dangles down a little bit and I can pull it up tight against the top there. Might even do it in two spots. I want a nice clean look without cables hanging down. All right, let's show you what we have so far. All right. USB 3. Make sure that's nice and snug goes around here and that's going to be hidden by the chrome panel. We have the, oh, get my hand out in front of it, we have the fan and the front panel connector. They both go down. We have the USB 2 connector. It goes down. We have the rear fan connector. It goes down and the audio connector for the front panel it goes down. And then at the top here, this is the uh, LED RGB connector. It goes up and through that hole. Yeah, it's going through this hole. And then uh, we have clear over in that back corner, 
there's the rear fan wire that goes around the back so that it can come up from the bottom. Oh, and we have the CPU fan in there, which was difficult to get to. Over here on the front, that white strip is the LED strip. And it's connected right here what the back looks like. Um, all those wires that came down and were tucked in the bag here, I've routed them you know different directions just to use up the slack wire and uh, they go to their their connections. So pretty straightforward. This one right here is the not used USB connection for the unused fan and LED intelligent box. And uh, that's about it. So I have a few more cables that need to be plugged in. They are not attached to anything here yet. So I started by connecting all the ones that were already here attached to something. Um, they were either attached to the, the CPU fan that I installed or they were attached to the case. So the next cables are here. Okay, Cable Mod Pro Series Cable Kit. Pro Mod Mesh C Series Kit RMI RMX White. Let's see. You have to get the right cables to go with your power supply that's what they connect to. So this is what connects the power supply to the other devices inside the computer. And they come in different colors. I got white. I wanted uh, some high contrast with all the black here. And the white will uh, bounce the, the RGB LED lights, uh, reflect them, whatever color I'm, I'm shining on there. Let's dig in. Originally I was gonna go with a silver cable but they did not have any of those in stock. But white will do. Quality assurance. Now, the power supply itself did come with cables. But I wanted pretty cables. So, that's what we're using. All right, we have here a variety of cables and some cable separators. So what do we have? We have a big one. Pretty sure we need that one. And the rest of these look pretty similar. Oh, that's different. Yeah, I don't need that one.
they give you more cables than you need. So I have to figure out which ones I need here. But I know I need this big one. So uh, what I'm looking for is the big cable that plugs into the motherboard. big cable that plugs in here and that's going to go this way through this hole and then over here where you can see them we have one here and one here those are also for power and they're going to go through that hole at the top and once I get those installed, then I have a graphics card. Now the graphics card is an optional thing. You don't have to have a graphics card. Uh, gaming machines and editing machines tend to have graphics cards. I'm going to do editing, so uh, graphics card is going to go in the top slot here. And it'll have ports in the back. And it has, I think, two cables that I have to connect to it. And they're probably going to go down here through the bottom. So, here we go. It's a pretty cable. Alright, make sure it matches here. These, uh, some of these are square, and some of them have uh, kind of trapezoid shapes. The edges are knocked off the squares. And so, uh, you have to make sure you're getting the right cable plugged in the right way. Looks like it goes this way. Hmm. All right. Let's feed this in from the back. I just realized that it has cable separators on it. That's very nice. See, here's the cable separators. They keep the cables all parallel and pretty. Got to make sure that's thoroughly plugged in. Looks like it is. So, I have to decide how sharp of a turn I want to try to get this to make. I can either try to go straight under the chrome panel or I can try to come around the chrome panel and in the back side, which would be a, an easier curve to make. Or I can come out and make my curve out here and come back. Something like that. I'll, I'll figure that out. Might be about time to put that chrome piece in. All right, which ones of these go up top? All right, I think I've got that. All right, it took me a minute to figure out which cable was which cable, but I've got it now. So this one is the next cable to plug in. Yeah. Put it on the camera there. Okay, it's going to go this way. All right, snapped into place. Something like that. And now for the other one here. Straighten out the bends in the cable a little bit. This is the one that has the loose wire separators. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on there. 
Now this cable right here, it has the ability to come apart into two. Now I'm only going to use uh, half of this cable, but because it's all connected to one at the other end, the, all eight are going to be plugged in at the other end. So the half that's not doing anything, I have two options of what to do with it. I can try to shove it into an empty space in the back of the case, unconnected to anything, or uh, I can leave it connected to the other half. There we go, like that, put it back together. They slide together. I can just leave it connected like that, and the other four pins on on this side won't be connected to anything. And they don't stick out past the plastic, so they're, they're really not going to touch anything. So as long as the connector goes on all the way, I'll probably just leave it hanging out there, looking like it's connected to something when it's not. That's just as good as shoving it in the hole in the back. Because I'm leaving those connected, then what I want to do is install these wire separators. Now it came with ones for four and ones for eight. And because I'm going to leave this connected together, I'm going to use the ones for eight. So I need to put those on here. I mean, I suppose instead of shoving the unused wire somewhere in the back of the case, you could just clip the wires if you really wanted to have just four and you didn't want to try to shove this bulky wire somewhere in the back. It took me a minute to get those on, but they're on now. So this goes in here, turns around, and it plugs in. play with those a bit to get them perfect, but they're close. All right, what next? Do I want to go around back and plug them into the power supply, or do I want to try to install the graphics card? Hmm, I think I'm going to go ahead and go for the graphics card. So, push this back a bit. All right. Here is the graphics card. That's actually the bottom. It's, here's where the wires connect. That's the out, outward facing side. It goes this way. Looks like this must be instructions or something. We have an adapter. I think that's called DVI. To that might be HDMI. Interesting. I had to buy one of those once before. I don't think DVI is used much, so I'm a little surprised to see that here. We have a quick start guide and a support guide. Quick Start Guide is much larger than the Support Guide. All right, the reason that the Quick Start Guide is uh, so big is because it's in many different languages. It has some information on installing multiple graphics cards. It's not something I'm going to be doing here. So, yeah, you basically just put it in. It requires removing two of the uh, rear panel slots. It's probably going to be the top two. Let me, let me see here. Got to remove the right ones if this is going to work. All right. There they are. Two of them removed.
Sounds like it clicked into place to me. All right. Yep, plenty of clearance between that and the heat risers for the CPU cooler, so that's good. It's important to install the graphics card in the top slot that's uh, closest to the CPU. That port is designed to uh, handle the, the traffic load, I guess. I want to make sure that the ports on the back have enough clearance around them that the cable, when you plug it in, doesn't hit the case of the computer. Um, I don't know if that really matters. If the if the outer part of the connector is a ground, it, it won't make any difference at all. But I'm not familiar with whether the outer part of the connector is a ground or not. So because of that, I want to check it out. And to do that, I'm going to need a US or not a USB, a HDMI cable or something like that to test it with. Just need something I can plug in and unplug to check the ports to make sure that stuff can plug in properly. All right, so I've looked into the, the metal part on the outside of an HDMI cable, and it seems to be that that's just like shielding. It's not actually connected to the wires inside. So if that touched something on the outside of the case, it shouldn't matter. Let me make sure that this will actually plug in and out though. Yeah, that works great. Okay. If I needed to, I could uh, use a file on the case and enlarge the hole in the back a little bit to clear the edges of the, the connectors. You know, take the graphics card back out and make the modification and put it back in. But it doesn't look like I need to do that. So, moving on. Um, graphics card, let me put this stuff away. Okay. So where was I here? Graphics card is in, connected to the motherboard and to the back, and the screws are in to hold it in place. I think I need the power cords for the graphics card. And we're getting down to the end of it here. So the power cords for the graphics card should be this one and this one. I guess I should feed it up through the bottom, right? Try to straighten out the folds a bit where they're folded from being in the package. Okay, I think this might actually work better to feed it down from the front, so I'm going to do that. Oh, let's see. I have it upside down. Let me rotate that around. All right. This one, this cable has six pins. All right. I might clip one of these on these cables to hold them together. I guess plugging in the cables to the power supply on the back is where I'm at next. Either that or put in the, the wiring uh, cover, the comb piece. Probably go ahead and plug the cables in. There you go, you can see the graphics card connection there. A lot of cables back here. I may need to go ahead and put in the chrome piece So I know exactly where this is going to go. 
that's probably the thing to do. That's okay. I can work with that. This one, though, what am I going to do with that? Boy, it would be nice if this um, connection on the motherboard came out the side instead of coming out the front. But it is what it is, and we're going to work with it. Let's see where this actually goes. Should be like this. Yeah, it looks like that clears the graphics card just fine. Just have to get it to clear the uh, cable here. Okay, the top screws started. Not, not quite all the way in, but it's snug. And the bottom screw is in. I need to do the back screw, and then I can fiddle with the cable some more. Try to get it where I want it. All right, that screw won't line up quite yet. I'm gonna mess with the cable some first, I think. So it basically needs to come out and come back and then go that way. It can't just go sideways. Let's try to get another one of these dividers on the other side here. Get the height correct. All right, top screw is tight. Wonder if I can get the back one in now. There we go. All right, that's on there. All right, that looks about right. Keeping the cables parallel to each other there. I'll run with that and figure out how to connect this down at the bottom. This is a lot of cables. I think I'm just gonna run this down the middle here which means I should probably connect the graphics card first. Okay, this is where these connect. And this goes there, all right. That was easy enough. Next is this one. Let's see the clip on the bottom. Okay. Maybe that one would have been a little easier if I'd taken the rest of that hard drive tray out. Did I get it? I think I got it. Pretty sure that's it. Two more to go. But I want to mess with these cables a little bit. Hmm. I have to think on how to hold that up there. All right, let me go ahead and switch over to these. Hmm. What am I going to do with that one? 
Does it need to go over here? Not really where I wanted it, but it looks like that's where it's got to go. All right, getting warmer. So this one goes here. All right, and this one goes here. There we go, they're plugged in. A little more work to make sure they look pretty. And then I can start putting panels back on. So I'm okay with that. Hopefully that panel will go on okay. It would be nice if this sat flatter. Maybe I should take that piece right there off, just so the cables have some more room Put the screw back in so I don't lose it. All right. Yeah. Now this edge isn't up against the wires or anything. Just gives them a little more room to, to be in there. That's, a, that's another hard drive holder. Hmm. What to do there? Maybe I could run some of them through this other channel here. Hopefully that will help hold that up into the shape that I want it. That's pretty close to right. situated. Let's see. What do I want to do with these? Parallel is the ideal. Let's see if I can clip this on there to keep the two cables together. parallel there. Okay. So this one looks pretty straight. <clears throat> this one looks pretty straight. Nice, pretty, even curves, parallel lines. Now I have the ones in the top left corner over here to do can't really see them there, but that's what I'm working on. Try to get these to kind of flow symmetrically here. They're not really going to be parallel and together. They have to go in a V shape because they're spread apart on the back of the panel. I think that looks about right. All right, so here's what it looks like.
here's what the back looks like. Not too bad. And if I can uh, get these two cables closer together, when I put this back cover on, I would I would prefer to do that so they can be parallel on the front. But it kind of just depends on how much space is between this and the panel itself. Uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be much. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see, there's a release button right there. This goes on here, and how much space is there? There might be some because of the shape of the panel. Seems to fit fine. Let me try it the way I want it and see if that will still go on. Okay, let me see if I can get those parallel. So how am I going to hold those parallel? I could zip tie. That might do it. Probably go that route. Because I can put it in the back behind uh, where it's not seen. Yeah. So I'm basically going to use a zip tie as a wire loop. There's my zip tie, just holding those two cables together behind the scenes over there. All right, there we go. So we have nice parallel cable routing. And now we can put the panels on. if I could still do better on these cables here. Let's try taking this one off. I basically took out the, the little piece connecting these two cables so they're, they're parallel without being pulled together. That's the air filter on the front. That's the top panel. That's the front panel.
before closing this up, I'll wipe the fingerprints off the mirrored surfaces. Now the glass panel goes back on the front or the side. All right, it's on, back together. Okay, uh, now what? I guess I need to plug it into the power to the wall and hook up a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and see if it comes on.